Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul with RP1 series in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1. In this episode, we will try and plant a flag on the moon, not merely land a Kerbal on the moon. We've got our lander in place and finally our astronaut complex is fully upgraded so that Kerbals on EVA can plant flags. Uh, so I time warped 60 days and during that time I built some extra Hammonds just in case, you know, the first one fails, of course. And I am rolling this out. That's going to take three days. Of course, I would rather not have to roll out the rest of them because it's expensive. So we will see. There goes the money. Let's go with Daffrey Kerman. Just for the heck of it. Okay, Daffrey Kerman it is. Okay, everything seems to be intact on the launch pad. We should still have enough time to build something for the Jupiter window when that comes around. And we just unlocked better communications, so I'm not entirely sure. I think we must have gotten the Pioneer dish from that. And ignition. Check it. We have food? Well, we can't check. Yes, it looks like we have supplies. Very good. We have lost an engine. I'll prepare to shut down the opposing engine. Oh, controllability is a bit wacky because we're going through max Q. I'm going to shut down the opposing engine right now. It's risky, but... wobbling all over the place. Oh god. Uh, please. Okay. Losing an engine right while we're approaching max Q is not great. But oh, we have survived so far. Not the optimal situation, though. Well, we have a brilliant dawn here. Well, we've almost made it through this stage without any other engine quitting. The four engines have had to run for quite a bit longer than the normal rate of burn time. Okay, separation and ignition. I see a little blue flame. Okay, the J2 has ignited. Okay, we've had a pretty good launch profile this time, and we are approaching orbit now. And shut down, 186 by 173, really tight orbit, but that leaves us with 1135 meters per second in the tank, 0.28 degree inclination. So let's see what we can do. Uh, you know what? I'll just plot it. Make Jeb will always try and do the uh, sort of normal burn in the middle, which I don't need. Of course, the most important thing is to make a rendezvous with our lander. Well, we we can probably manage a correction of some sort. Uh oh. Okay. Well, first of all, I need to figure out which of these landers. Well, they're really close to each other, so that's good. But one of them is not the right lander. Which one is that one? Yeah, let me go to Space Center and figure that out, rename one of them, and I'll be right back. But uh, yeah, I won't uh, record all of that. Okay, so I've renamed the one that we want, New Hammond Lander. I've let go of the nose cone and replotted and we seem to have a good approach. We'll need a small mid-course adjustment, but that's obviously doable. Hopefully. It shouldn't be very big at all. It should be an RCS burn only. Okay. That should be good enough. Settling the fuel down. Looks good. But pause. And ignition. Oh, we've got blue flame. And it's burning. Might want to fix this plume for my Apollo recreations, though. Don't like how it's sort of bulging out. 
of the nozzle. Okay, good burn there. Separation. And... <laughs> always wants to pause. And ignition. And we have an ignition on the RD-58. Okay, our spacecraft is configured for transit. I sure hope Daffrey packed her flag. Okay, that's uh, pretty good. And we are definitely good on this vehicle. Even if the RD-58 doesn't work right now, we can capture into orbit and return with the fuel in this tank. So, no problems there. One thing we'd like to do is do a mid-course correction to correct that 4.2 degree inclination difference. Okay, I'll go with that. 1.4 meters per second only. Okay, well, these little thrusters on the RD-58 stage aren't the greatest, but it's working. Okay, that'll be good enough. We aren't recharging right now, though. Uh, the sun... Okay, we're recharging during time warp, though. Okay, that's because the avionics core, which is where? That one powers down. Okay. All right, on our way to the moon. Our Delta V actually goes up a little bit because of the consumption of water, food, and oxygen. Okay, the moon is visible, thankfully. I hate when it sneaks up on me. Okay, it says very stable. Ignition. Okay, the RD-58 has lit again. Okay, we have a good encounter forming up and shut down. Okay, looks like 12 kilometers is as close as we get immediately. But unfortunately that encounter is going to be on the nighttime side. Is it going to have communication with Earth? It would seem that way, so that's good because we want the probe to be able to communicate. All right, let's get on over there. Okay, we're going to try and use this stage to match speeds with the target, but after that we'll dump it because it's too cumbersome to dock with it on, and hopefully we can deorbit it. There's not a whole lot of electric charge in it, but it's probably enough. Unfortunately, this engine has a dubious indicator over there. In other words, it doesn't show when it's unstable. Okay, ignition. And shut down. Okay, stabilize. And separate. Okay, and this stage retrograde. Oh, I guess that's not possible. It says connected. Hmm. We have electric charge. We have a control core. We have power. Why is this not turning then? We have SAS. No, well, I mean, we have RCS thrust. Hold on. Let me try the input lock thing. I don't know. Not cheats, uh, input locks. Okay. Hmm. Well, wow, it's turning the nozzle when I do retrograde. Okay, that's the thrusters that we were just using. This was the fuel we were just using for those thrusters. 
It says we're connected. We have electric charge. I just want to dispose of it. What's the I main? Is that so hard? None of the RCS keys work. I can activate RCS. Can't do roll, can't do pitch, can't do yaw. Hmm. Well, okay. Anyway. We'll just have to let that be. It is not a priority. I do have to be somewhat attentive to the fuel up here. It, it didn't seem like it was anywhere close to running out last time, but because we can transfer fuel from the service module up, we definitely don't want to run out of that. Now it says local control in red, so we don't have any connection to this anymore. Um, well, anyway, it's on SAS, so as long as it stays on SAS, we should be fine. Hmm. Well, something's making this a little bit hard to rendezvous with. I hope SAS is on, but it's not feeling very, very on right now. Feels like it's doing more than it needs to do. Let me just go over and check. Yeah, well, see now it's definitely turning. <laughs> and that's not what SAS is supposed to do, is it? So uh, even though we have no connection, I'll cheat and tell smart ASS to control it because, you know, it's not supposed to be just puffing away all over the place, is it? Kill rotation. I'll just have smart ASS do kill rotation. That's probably safest. And I hope we haven't used too much. No, the RCS seems fine. Okay, we are on final approach. Uh, well, come on. There we go. All right, RCS off. All right, Daffy is looking a little bit under the panel there, but uh, otherwise we're all docked and Daffy needs to transfer out to the pod. We've got the commutrons out here and out there. I would like to make the transfer when we have communication though. Right now, when she gets out, the vessels will not be under control. So we'll wait until we have control first. Okay, we have communication now, so we can transfer Daffy. hopefully. Let me just have SAS and RCS on and Daffy EVA. And board. Okay, Daffy's on board there. We can just undock now. Let's have this side back away. Well, RCS, SAS, back away. Okay. So, where do we want to land? Well, this time I don't want to do any funny plane changes. Let's just, uh, I guess here. It's probably not a different biome. Yeah, basically all the regular old landing locations like Oceanus Procellarum are in the dark. So I don't want to land there. Though landing over here means we'll, we'll be out of communication, of course. It's not great. This location over here, Midlands, there's major craters. I guess we'll go for major craters here. Yeah, that's that's... I want to hit this crater, so hopefully that's not going to be too difficult, even though we're sort of catching the edge of it, right? Could be slopey. So we'll do two burns with the RL10s, one to start our descent, and then one to finish off the stage. Eight. Oh, that's a good start right there. It's really just the edge of that crater though. I need to head a little bit south, even though that will require an inclination adjustment on the way up. 
fortunately the lander zone stage is pretty quick okay we'll, we will try this I don't usually plot a maneuver like this before landing I just go for it by the seat of my pants so did I plot it right I don't know Time to land, it says six minutes. I think that's with the plot. Suicide burn countdown, seven minutes and 50 odd seconds. Okay, ignition. Okay, we got five good ignitions from these RL-10s. They're being all reliable. Expensive, but reliable. Here down. We'll just stay on internal power until we go back up again. I don't want to extend the solar panels right now. It shouldn't be a problem, but... I probably should have put some more powerful RCS thrusters on here. Maybe even configure it to be able to dock. Right now it can't, of course. I don't re really need to land at that spot. Actually, further south would be fine. I hope we weren't doing major craters last time too, were we? Maybe we were. I might have hit another major crater. It's not this one, but it might have been another one. Gosh darn it. I don't know, is this some instrument I could check that by? Well, no. Well, we haven't done Midlands. No usable comm devices? What do you mean no usable comm de Oh, well, we don't have communication back home right now. Midlands of the moon we haven't done before. Just above the highlands. Keep. Not being able to transmit is a pain. Well, anyway, we're coasting down and we're going to hit the major craters. That's just how it's going to be. Well, we haven't ever analyzed telemetry from just above the major craters, so maybe that's a good sign. Not a bad place to land overall. Nice big crater over there. Probably some interesting rocks around. Okay, well, I've taken the patient approach to the surface, as you can see. Since we have a lot of fuel. Could we have hopped to another biome? Maybe, but that's risky. Okay. RCS off. Extend ladder. Now, Daffy, I need you to get some science first. EV report is fine. Major craters, okay, it's new. Thank goodness. I was worried. Take surface sample, sure. Keep. Now, uh, take data. Take all the data. Yeah. Store experiments. Oh, she can't really get to that because the jetpack. Well, we'll have to just redo that. Yeah, I'll overwrite it. Okay, I guess analyzed telemetry is would be new as well. Okay, EVA. Okay. Plant a flag. Yes, she has the flag. I never did put my own flag in. Okay, Daffy at the major crater craters. Brought ah, uh, brought the flag this time. Yep. Okay, why doesn't it check mark the plant a flag on the moon thing? 
Maybe it's annoyed because it's not a human. So it doesn't count, but that doesn't make any sense. It check mark the crew member. Oh, okay. Now it check marks plant a flag on the moon. Just do it promptly next time. Okay, retract ladder. Now we'll extend the solar panels. Now that the Kerbal is safely inside and not going to bump into them. And we're going to make our way back to that Hammond. Well, it's in front of us. We should just go towards it, heading to target and everything. All right, RCS on. Hope I didn't forget anything this time. And launch. We obviously want to get into a lower orbit to catch up. Okay, looking pretty good on the inclination. I don't know how much we can correct. We did deviate a little from the original place, from the original orbit. I don't think we can correct more than that, so 0 0.7 degrees. But we've got plenty of Delta V. Okay, I think I should just coast a bit here because we're gaining a little bit high on the apoapsis and pretty far from it. We are certainly catching up. But we don't really want to rendezvous when we don't have control over the probe since that's the only thing that can dock. Well, now we don't. Uh, now we do have communication, but it's sort of a long chain, right? That's the line coming in, and we're connecting through this Hammond lander, and then the Hammond, and then us. So, not too sure how reliable that is. I better keep it to that. Okay, it'll take us a few orbits to catch up. Okay, well, we are unlocking a new technology, Advanced Flight Control. And that is complete. Okay, go away alarm. Well, temporarily our periapsis will be negative as we approach. And I'm just pouring on the Delta V here. We are clearly in sight of the Earth, so communication should be good. So I would like to rendezvous now. I approve of this pod. A little bit more development, maybe a Gemini lander capsule and then um, better solar panels to power it because that has more power requir requirements, but I think we could continue to make this work for us. Well, we know we can't transfer fuel out of this, though the other side has a lot of fuel left over. Everything has a lot of fuel left over because I, I packed them anticipating some sort of engine failure. Altogether, it seems like uh, things have gone pretty well. This is has been a model mission as far as the design is concerned. I do have to remember to transfer to science. I'm I've gotten used to Kerbalism automatically doing that sort of thing in the other series. That's a nice function. And apparently the way science works is going to change in the newer version of Kerbalism. I don't know what to make of that just yet, but we'll see. Uh, come on. All right. RCS off. Okay, Daffrey. Uh, let's make sure we get all the science, huh? So, take data. And there was that one experiment on the other side that we didn't quite get. Okay, grab and board. All right, that operation is successful. We have stowed much science. We could have used, well, I don't even have ship manifest here. 
wonder why I keep forgetting to put it in. I think the the sound that Ship Manifest makes has traumatized me and I have some sort of subconscious thing against ever adding it to stuff. But anyway, uh, let us decouple. We still have control, so we can safely, whoops, push this pod away. But it's still got 500 meters per second and supplies, so it can hang out for a while. All right, well, time to come back home. Unfortunately, we couldn't transfer all this fuel into it because of the heat shield in the way. We have eight days of food, water, and oxygen, which should be enough. It's looking good. Well, I mean, we did have engine failures during this mission. We lost uh, one of the proton engines, the RD-253, but that wasn't critical. This time I would like to guarantee a return on the first orbit. So I'm, I am going to use the service module remaining fuel. Okay, that's good enough. We're not using all of it, but we brought it down to a six hour orbit. That should do the trick and I kept the periapsis to 60 kilometers. So, orbit normal, check the fuel up here, that's good. Separ separation, mm, separation, okay, and, and I do want to use descent mode, so I'm turning that on. Okay, all the great explosions. Preparing to roll around if necessary. Okay, yeah, I think it's necessary. We will roll. Okay, preparing to roll back. Well, okay, rolling back. <laughs> Not preparing, just rolling back. All good. Looking very smooth. Bit of a bounce up, but... Okay, well, we're through the initial burst, but we still have the area around 40 kilometers to deal with. Uh, only 2.8 G's up to this point. That doesn't include launch, though. Okay, going through the second bit. Okay, that appears to be the peak. And 3.9 G's, so relatively good. Nothing wrong with double checking or triple checking the parachutes at the last minute. Just in case, this is not the time to make a mistake. Alright, and splash down. Recover vessel, and hopefully the contract is fulfilled. Daffy Kerman is back, we've got some science. And finally, our our moon attempt will be complete, right? October 13th, 1968. 384 science earned. Daphri is level 2 now. We can't deploy her for a month, which is less leave time than I think our previous Kerbinaut took. And, well, contracts does not include that contract. So, yes, we have completed first human Kerbal. What's the difference? Uh, landing. And we've got a lot of um, reputation. Not as many funds as I would like. 
So yes, next time, well, I think we should go for the Jupiter, con uh, well, the Jupiter window. So Jupiter flyby, Jupiter flyby. I'll, let's check quickly whether I have the antenna or not, but I'm, I'm basically going to wrap it up here because, well, we sent a Kerbal out to the moon, landed on the moon and brought the Kerbal back. I'm, I'm going to stop it, but let me just check that I can pick up the Jupiter flyby mission and then we will do the Jupiter flyby mission next time or at least launch it. Okay, yes, hopefully when it says Pioneer 10 slash 11 class antenna, it means it. Says good for Jupiter and beyond. Entry cost is zero for some reason. Um, I don't know why, but far be it for me to complain. Come on, unlock it though. Oh, well, it can't be the first part, right? So, yep, that is good. And I don't think we have RTGs, but with that power consumption and what I expect from the probe, I think we can build big enough solar panels to handle it. So, yes. We are going to pick up this contract and then I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.